Hi there, I'm John from cncri.com and today we're going to make version 2.0 of my log cabin birdhouse. Now a couple of days ago I showed you pictures and a video in a blog post on cncri.com about the first version of this log cabin birdhouse that I designed and made. And this one here has a lot of improvements upon the original design. The number one issue I had with the old design was that by the time you put all the plywood flat, you end up with basically a flat side. And it kind of ruins the aesthetic of a log cabin because log cabins are generally rounded or angled so that you can see each individual log, which you can sort of see now. Now again, I just faked this using the CNC router. What you'll see is you'll see initial pass where I'm not actually cutting through the material. I'm actually using a 90 degree bit, uh, which is sort of like, like this. And what it does, it goes through the whole design and cuts out the edge. Now the reason why I'm using the CNC router to do that rather than doing it by hand is because these parts are pretty small and it's, you know, you have a spinning bit and you don't want to put your hands anywhere near it. And that's the huge advantage of using a CNC router is that even with really small parts that you could flick off your finger with uh, using power tools, it's totally safe to do on a CNC router. Now the other major improvement that I made on this design was to have every part of this design actually made from the same plywood. And what I mean by that is there's no more wooden dowel. This part is actually cut out as part of the process of cutting out the whole design. And I actually optimized the whole cutting process too. Uh, what you'll notice is that uh, there's not any extra parts in this. And actually there's more parts in this design than the previous design. So just to show you visually. So here's version 1.0. This is 48 inches and this is version 2.0. So I've managed to use my material a lot more optimal. So I got maybe a quarter of the wasted material, material that I had the other time around. And that's something a lot of people don't quite understand. When we do a lot of one-offs here in the shop, I tend to be more conservative regarding material. And if we're making like huge production runs, well then it's worthwhile to do a lot of prototyping because then I could optimally optimize the use of the material. So the material ends up costing less per unit.
Now the other problem I had when I cut this out first uh, with my CNC router the last time around with version 1.0 was this inside part here actually exploded on me uh, in the machine. And that happens every once in a while. Sometimes you're too aggressive with the cutting path. Uh, sometimes you don't need enough material. So in this case here you can see it's a perfect circle. And actually the way I designed it is that I can now have the circle almost, you know, almost right to the edge and not affect it. Because the way the CNC router is working now to produce this hole, instead of just cutting it out like this, it's actually uh, sort of engraving the hole out and going over and over again, slowly going into it. So there's no waste in material, uh, meaning that there's no like little wooden puck that will fly off across the shop because everything is just made into sawdust. Now when I first designed this project to cut out with a CNC router, let me grab this one here, you'll notice that there's some tabs. It might be a little bit hard to see because I had to cut them. But basically what I was doing is I was cutting out and producing the tabs at the same time. So the first pass of the router was cutting out the shape and the second pass was cutting out just a little bit more in the tab. And that caused problems because I was removing too much material at the same time as the tab was being too small. So what that means is the part starts to vibrate and again flies off the machine. Now this version here, you'll notice that I used my jigsaw and that's because I made the tab a lot thicker. It's roughly half an inch by half an inch. So it's a very solid tab. Now that kind of sucks when you're trying to take it off, but again, uh, using a jigsaw, it takes two seconds to take it off. Then you throw it through the sander and the sander just removes that tab completely. So I didn't even know it ever existed. <laughs>
assembly process is identical to what I did last time around. Again, it's almost exactly the same design, just a few little optimizations here and, here and there to make uh, production more efficient regarding material. And again, get rid of the dowel part so everything is cut in one shot. Now, the only other design change I would make to, make to this here in the future would actually make some sort of support material because I would want this to have uh, like a, a flat base like this here, like it already has a flat base, but another one at an angle so I could put it up on a post or something like that. But I'll play with different ideas and see what I come up with. So I just want to give you guys an idea of what goes through uh, the design process. Uh, generally it takes a couple of prototypes to make something this relatively complex, although it is pretty simple compared to the other stuff I've made uh, for myself and my businesses and my customers. So if you're looking for custom fabrication, contact me at cncri.com. We work with metal, wood, plastic, and of course, uh, plywood too.